Good morning. Hello and welcome to our New Year's Eve celebration and farewell uh, to the Nancy A. Miller Marion Public Library. My name is Rachel. I am a teen services assistant with the Marion Public Library and I have been with the library for the past uh, five years uh, and apart from uh, working with teen services and programming um, in my time off I very much enjoy playing with the Sims computer games um, and back in uh, March and April of this year um, during the um, pandemic when the library building was closed um, I did a program called Teen Tech Time every Wednesday uh, and for an hour we do different games and tech resources online and one of those games uh, or, or events uh, was me playing um, The Sims 3, as you see on the screen, um, and building our library building. Well, uh, obviously fast forward to today and circumstances are both the same and very different. Um, for those of you um, who uh, had not visited um, our library um, before the August 10th derecho that swept through Lynn County. Um, you didn't have a chance to visit uh, this particular building because uh, significant damage was done to our roof and unfortunately the building um, was uh, deemed um, you know, incompatible for us to continue working out, out of it um, in whatever services we had been doing. And um, it was a really hard blow for us and our community. Um, and we have since thrived and, and found other spaces that we can continue to serve our Marian community. And we uh, are so grateful for all the support that has been given to us and all the support we can offer. Uh, during this wild and uh, bonkers year that was 2020. Um, we are sad that we were not able to um, continue working from this building, uh, but excited because already in the works, even despite this year, um, was our new building project. Um, and those of you who have driven through Uptown Marion have likely seen the uh, new building. We've got a couple elevator shafts and, and a few things up in the building right across the street from the old building. Um, and we are so excited for um, that new building to uh, arise. But uh, in the meantime, um, we are serving throughout the community. Our staff is all over Marion. Um, we've got a tech station out at the Knights of Columbus um, in Marion, as well as a storefront right on the other side of the park um, on 7th Avenue that we are um, able to uh, get books out to people and do the, the things that um, we love to do, and that is to connect you with uh, the books and media that you want and continue to be a friendly face and, and a part of the heart of the Marian community. Um, as I said, after the derecho um, on August 10th, we really didn't get much of a chance to say goodbye to our old library that we've served out of for 26 years. Um, and so this is just a fun, lighthearted chance um, for you to say goodbye. Um, for us to say goodbye. Um, I know this for me. Um, I've only been here five years, but I've also been here five years. Um, and I have a lot of memories and uh, fondness for this building, as excited as I am for the future. Um, and I'm excited to have this replica in the uh, Sims 3 
to look back on and uh, enjoy. So uh, we are going to get started here. So as you can see, um, there's already been this shell built. meeting room area over here. Um, we've got our lobby area, this tall part right here. Um, and um, the rest of our library spaces over in this area. Um, so this is um, the building that was at 1095 um, 6th Avenue um, for 24 years, built in 1996. Um, it is the Nancy A. Miller Marion Public Library. Um, Nancy Miller is uh, and has always been a wonderful supporter of the library and uh, her generous uh, contribution for this building um, was much appreciated and is much appreciated and I know um, Nancy Miller is, is just as excited for our next building our next chapter. Um, speaking of our next chapter, that is the name of our fundraising campaign for the Marion Public Library. Um, if you're interested in supporting the library, um, no pressure, but um, if you are interested in supporting the library, our next chapter is uh, the way you can donate um, to uh, help us um, make our next building um, just as wonderful as this one was. Um, if you have any interest, you can visit our website at marionpubliclibrary.org. Um, the link should also be in the description. Um, or you can directly contact um, our foundation director, Amy, um, and uh, her email is on the website as well. Um, so uh, our next chapter, we're looking forward to it. Um, and today we're going to do a little bit of closing of, of our previous chapter. So let's get in there. So I uh, have already kind of, obviously, as you can see, started um, to do some things. Um, last time um, on our teen tech time that I was doing that I had mentioned earlier, um, we had uh, added some things in our lobby um, that our library had had. Uh, and I'm working pretty much off of memory right now. Um, so if uh, any viewers uh, have any comments or suggestions or you know you think, oh wait, that actually went there, please let me know. Um, obviously I spent quite a bit of time in this building as a staff member, but uh, you know, patrons and other staff members um, who are, who are watching may remember things differently okay we all have different memories and all have uh, different fun stories that we could tell um, of things that happen in this building um, so as you can see um, we had our little table in the corner here um, we had some colorful benches uh, in our library as well as bathrooms um, our bulletin board used to be here I'm kind of uh, working off of different iterations, kind of combining them all together into something, something cool. Um, I know we had a phone over here in the corner. Um, so it was a cart, and obviously our friend's bookstore was out here too. Um, so we're gonna have to add some bookshelves out here as well. But I thought the li or the lobby would be a pretty good place to start. Um, uh, for those of you wondering, these round circular things that are sort of in the way um, are lights. Uh, and unfortunately, just due, with, due to the way the game works, um, if I did not have those lights there, you would not be able to see very much. And I want to make sure you can see um, so I can kind of move them to the side if I need to um, for you to get a better view. Um, just, just give me a shout out in the, in the comments and I'm happy to adjust as needed but as you can see even just taking that away makes things really dark so we don't want to do that so uh, for those of you who don't know the sims is a very large um, or very popular video game franchise that is currently in its fourth iteration 
Um, there's uh, the original Sims game, um, and then there was The Sims 2, this is The Sims 3, and uh, The Sims 4 uh, is currently out there and, and being played. Um, I've been playing The Sims for over 15 years, um, all the way from The Sims 1, The Sims 2, The Sims 3. Um, I've dabbled a little bit in The Sims 4, but what I really like about The Sims 3 um, that keeps me coming back to it um, is both this kind of open world concept um, where you can kind of see everything all at once. Um, it's, uh, you can just look around and, and here's the world. Uh, this is Sunset Valley, which is comes with the, the base game of The Sims 3. Um, and I also love something that The Sims 4 doesn't have is a tool called Create a Style. Um, so right now I'm looking to add a vending machine here because we had a vending machine in our lobby. Um, and create a style allows you to go in and when you use the tool, you're actually able to completely customize using this color wheel what color certain parts of an object or, or um, item are. Um, and so, if I remember correctly, that vending machine was mostly a darker color. Um, you change their different kind of patterns and um, overlays to it. Um, here's our freezer bunny version. And I have an automatic saving mod that prompts me to save just so we don't lose any progress in case the game crashes. Um, but uh, this create a style tool is really awesome because you can totally customize anything and really your only limit is the, the shape of the object or item that you're working with. Um, so it's really great to really be able to customize, you know, whatever you want um, and, and make it look exactly the way you want it. So I just... Sure, that looks like a, a vending machine. That is just fine. It's not going to be an exact replica, but we'll, we'll get pretty close. I'm going to make sure it's not totally inside the wall. Yeah. So here we are. We did have some columns in our lobby as well, so let's head into build mode and see if we can use those columns, I think. Well... <laughs> So, the lobby is two stories tall, um, and I should have two-story columns. Let's see here, we're a little more limited with the type of columns we can have in two-story. Um, so, these might be our best option. They're pretty simple. They're not as great. Um, they had, at the bottom of our columns had a little bit of a uh, flare out, kind of near the base, um, at about waist height. Um, and I remember that because a lot of times people would sit on the columns or use that as a way to uh, step up and climb on the columns. Obviously, that wasn't what we wanted to happen at the library. It was very tempting. But that is, that is one detail I will always remember about those columns, is <laughs> that they had that little flare out at the base, and that made for very easy climbing, especially for our younger patrons. So, let's see here. Uh, that'll work, I think. It was pretty close to that bench, wasn't it? I remember that too, because that was a pretty popular hangout spot in the afternoons after school. Um, and so people would just kind of sit on the column as well um, in this little corner back here. Um, let's see here. And I'm just going to make it, because I know it was mostly wood. It was a little bit of brick on the bottom. Um, so I'm going to make it wood. And then I might actually go in and add a little bit of brick on the bottom. Oh no, 
let's make some green. starting to look familiar, at least for me. Yeah. So, obviously, we also have the Friends Bookstore out here, so let's go ahead and add some bookshelves. popular at story times and out in the rest of the building as well. Miss um, uh, Lara says in the comments, it was crowded in real life too. That is very accurate, both with people and with books. Uh, yeah, no, that was very true. Okay, so I'm going to use these bookshelves since they're a little bit shorter. Obviously, um, but there are a lot of books um, out and around. So, uh, do this. And I remember they had a very funky, kind of nifty way for people to kind of get out and back around the DOT kiosk. Obviously, these bookshelves are only one sided, um, but the effect is there for sure. Yep, okay, so that's there. And I know we definitely had a bookcase over here at one point. Um, obviously, the when we moved a lot more bookshelves out into this lobby space, this bulletin board moved from here over here by the men's restroom. But personally, I kind of like it there, so I think I'm just going to leave that there. Um, and we'll just... Um, Play around a little bit. Maybe I'll just um, put the bookshelf right up against the wall. Maybe put the up. Yeah, let's do that. One, two. There, yeah, now the bookshelf is kind of right in front of the doorway, right across, easy to see. Now, let's get these looking a little more library. Looks like there's only one, um, all of this, you can only recolor one part of it, that big part of the wood. Um, whereas our shelves were a little more two-toned um, because we had the metal shelves and then we did have the wooden as well. Um, the wooden kind of uh, borders and accents as well. Um, let's see what it looks like when it's just all wood. Thank you. 
very faintly, it looks like the metal actually goes the opposite way that, than what I want. Um, so I'm gonna, I like that color, so I'm just gonna keep that color. There we go, that looks better. There we go. What do we think? Do we like the metal, or do we like the wooden bookshelf better? We might have to make some of these decisions in the actual library as well. You know, I'm actually kind of leaning towards the metal. I mean, obviously the shells didn't look quite like this, as I as I've said, it's not going to be an exact replica. Um, but yeah, I kind of like the metal. I might go with the metal. Let's uh, let's do the rest of the metal bookshelves. Or the rest of the bookshelves into metal. And there we are. our little friend's bookstore area. Now I know they were pressed up against the wall, so let's uh, get into that. Oh yeah, that makes maybe a little more sense. It gives it a little more room behind the DOT kiosk. You know, I can actually probably double up on the shelves here too. There we go. Metal be changed to a darker complement or darker tone to complement the light wood. Absolutely, we can do that. It might start to blend in with the wall color a little bit. Um, how dark do we want it? We could go much darker. I know our shelves. I mean, our shelves were lighter. Like that darker? Oops. Just that little bit. It kind of. Oops, let me do this. Ah, that's not gonna work. Let me find an angle that uh, I actually see. Scoot forward a little bit. Those star lights get in the way. We could do like one side metal, one side wood, and kind of um, imitate that way. As I was saying earlier, our um, library was built um, and opened in 1996. Um, so we've been here, had been here for 24 years. See, I'm still using We Have Been Here. Um, we use this building for 24 years. Um, and as far as I'm aware, uh, we never really changed any of the um, shelving or um, kind of standard fixtures. They were always this kind of two-tone, the, the shelving was kind of this color, and then they had a nice wooden side with uh, like this panel here, um, if you can see my cursor circling, um, wood was usually a different color, like a green or a blue or a red. And yeah, so I mean, this this kind of shelving was in that library for a very long time. And we are currently, um, for those of you wondering, uh, we are currently using um, most of those shelving um, in our storage facility. Um, so after the derecho, we worked very quickly to take all of the books out of the library. Um, first, they were um, brought in some specialists that uh, were able to help suck a lot of the humidity and water damage um, out of the building um, in an attempt to preserve um, as many of our books and paper materials as possible. Um, for 
all the water that was coming in through the ceiling. Um, we only lost, um, I believe the number was 10, five to, I would say five to 20% of our collection. I know that's a big range, but I don't want to misquote here. Um, but we were able to save quite a few of our books, definitely well over 50% of our collection, which was a huge relief. Um, so staff and a number of volunteers uh, were able to um, then, uh, after about a week or so had passed, we were able to come in and um, choose um, kind of which books we would like to keep at our new Uptown branch location that um, around the pandemic um, patrons would be able to browse for that brief window. Um, we did have an open patrons were able to come to the um, storefront um, on 7th Avenue that we have and um, look at uh, the some of like our children's collections. We have uh, our Playaway audiobook collection we were able to put there. Um, and then the majority of the collection, um, we moved to a storage facility. Um, and uh, that was actually done by professional movers because if you have never had to move books, oh boy, it is a hard business. They brought in a whole bunch of very large pallets of just, I mean, you know, a, I, can't, I don't even remember how how wide. Maybe the boxes were maybe like five feet by like five feet by five feet. Just huge gay lords is what they were called. Um, and um, the books were just stacked in these um, roughly by subject as as best as as best as they could, um, and then transported via truck um, out to the um, our storage facility. Uh, and so when you um, are looking for a book and you see something that is located at the Marion Public Library, most likely it is actually coming from that storage facility. So we have staff out there who are able to, um, uh, every morning just like they would in this library, they print out a list of books and, and items people have on hold and then they walk through the shelves and um, we have them roughly ordered. It's, we didn't just throw them on the shelf willy-dilly. Um, we, we did, you know, sort them by, like, adult fiction is over here versus, you know, teen nonfiction is over here. So, um, uh, and then, you know, within them, it's shelved just like in a library. So they are alphabetized. They are, um, you know, uh, sorted by series, if they're graphic novels, you know, that sort of thing. Um, so... That's where that's where books currently come from, as opposed to uh, you know being from this building and this library. like a drinking fountain, vaguely. That'll work. Let's see what other flavor options we have here. That's kind of nice. I mean, I don't think the drinking fountain was wood, obviously. Um, so maybe I'll just throw it and make it all metal. That just looks darker for some reason, so I'll leave that up. There we go. We've got our little quote, drinking fountain in the corner back here. Um, and then, I know, we had, I mean, we had some carts and things out here. It's not really something that The Sims has. I'm thinking of. Um, so, the other thing that uh, is pretty popular in The Sims community um, is there's a very large portion um, online of people who create content, um, and uh, it's called 
custom content and you can basically download it and put it in your game um, and it's so it's additional stuff that's created by people um, in the uh, in the sims community who are very talented and can create all sorts of objects and clothing and hairstyles and um, they you can download it you put it in your game and so if you know if there was a bookshelf that wasn't looking quite right you were like you know I really don't want a two-sided bookshelf I could probably go out there online and, and find someone who's made a two-sided bookshelf um, and this is you can all that the content is um, made for each specific game but there are people who make content for the sims 4 there are people who make content for the sims 2 or the sims 3 i've got a few pieces of custom content in my game right now but um the more you kind of add to it the more kind of laggy it can get and since i was streaming i didn't want my game to be too lagged down so i didn't really do a lot of extra searching um but um might have, I could probably easily find a cart if I wanted to, um, and maybe um, at some point I will. Um, so, I mean, I've got a couple, I don't really have anything on wheels, I've got a couple smaller tables that I could imitate, especially since we had quite a few carts um, out at the end of bookshelves for people to put books that they had been browsing and hadn't been looking or hadn't wanted to take with them. Um, I'll have to think about that. I'll have to think if I have any any cards that I have. But um, let's see. I don't think that the game, because this is a community lot, so um, in The Sims 3 at least, you can have residential lots where people live and you can have community lots. Some things are not included in what you can put on community lots. I don't I don't need to get into all of that, but um, what I'm looking for is a phone. Because um, I do still have wall phones because this was Sims 3 came out in 2009, um, which, man, was 11 years ago. Um, and people, it was still more popular back then for people to have landlines. Um, so, I mean, I guess this is a call box for apartments. There are apartments in The Sims, but you know what? I'm gonna use that as a phone. Um, we're just gonna, I'm gonna do that. Make it white, and then our phone did have kind of that classic blue that you think of when you think of like pay phones and stuff. Um, at least it felt like it. Maybe I'm totally misremembering, but it definitely felt like it had that to me. I think was kind of a payphone-esque box hanging on the wall. You didn't have to actually pay to use it because um, it wasn't a payphone. Um, it was just a public use phone. But I'm pretty sure there was that blue kind of around it. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and, and make it look like that. Um, uh, oh, yes. Yeah, so um, Madeline just chimed in and said, I need a recycled trash bin set up. That is absolutely true. We had two sets of... Um, trash bins and recycling bins in our um, in our lobby, which was great. Um, I don't have the, the nifty double-sided that we used to have, but I do have these very large recycling bins, and um, you know, I, we did see a, quite a bit of recycling. People would, you know, use bottles and cans and then recycle them, so um, I'm going to go ahead and this one, I believe, is actually on the other side of the bench, or very near the bench. So this is a little tricky here. We'll make it work. Or wait, maybe it was on the... You know what, I'm just going to set it here. I'm just going to put it right on the other side of the column to give that a little more space. I think at one point we did that did actually end up there anyway so recycling trash bins good to go um, yeah no our lobby's looking pretty great if I do say so myself and thank you to Miss Lara and to Madeline um, who is Madeline is our programming manager at the library um, they are 
tuning in and uh, uh, helping me out here. Um, so let's see here. Yeah, our lobby's looking pretty great, if I do say so myself. Looking familiar, at least. So we've got our phone here. So our meeting rooms, um, I did, um, let's see here. I did one, one piece of content I thought I had in here, but I don't, was actually a set of double doors. Um, Closet space in here. I mapped out some of it already, but you can see here's. I even included the wall we had between our meeting rooms. Um, uh, we had that wall for. We still had it when I started, so um, it's probably only two or so years ago um, that uh, we determined that um, as great as it was to have two separate spaces, a lot of times it didn't feel like it was two separate spaces um, because there was not a lot of noise control between the two um, and so often it was hard to schedule two things happening at the same time because it was so easy for noise to travel between them um, and that wall was very hard to move. Um, fun fact, um, it was that you needed to like unlock it and then you had to go at it at a certain angle because there was actually, so it folded back and came back into this space right here. Um, but there was this, um, the way the building was built that you can't see here, there was actually kind of like a column or some sort of um, support column here. And so this side would only open so far, so you could actually open both sides all the way. So you had to like put the wall in at an angle to get it back here. Just all these little quirks that, uh, you know, were <laughs> cause for a little bit of uh, uh, grumpiness um, from staff. Um, and, you know, our our wonderful patrons didn't necessarily get to see or know about what the little quirks that uh, staff members um, remember and uh, now look fondly back upon. Uh, at the time, not so fondly, but uh, it's fun to remember that now. Um, but I left the wall up for old time's sake um, and uh, the whiteboards in our meeting rooms, our meeting room tables, um, our big L shape. And then we had several storage um, storage rooms back here. Um, and our kitchenette was over here. Um, if you didn't know, we did have a, a kitchenette that was available um, to be used with our meeting room space. Um, the cool thing is, uh, I mean, that was pretty heavily used, and um, especially by Encore Cafe, which is our senior meals program partnering with um, Heritage Agency on Aging and the Parks and Recreation Department. Um, every, oh boy, I don't even remember it. I think it was every month, Monday and Friday, um, we would uh, have congregate meals uh, catered by hy -Vee served here, um, uh, primarily for our uh, senior community and Marion. Um, so a chance for um, ages, uh, 60. Man, I don't even remember now. That's sad. I believe it was 60 and up. Um, I don't think it was 65. 60 and up um, to uh, come and be able to connect with other people their age and also get a healthy, nutritious meal. Um, that's definitely one of those programs that, uh, and as soon as we can, we're going to be um, figuring out how, how we can uh, continue to um, be a part of that. Um, and support that. Um, and looking forward in our new building, um, you're going to have an awesome meeting room space that hopefully, cross your fingers, includes, is planned to include um, a 
much larger kitchen space um, and kind of serving dining space. Um, not permanent dining, um, but uh, having kind of an offset section in a meeting room um, that has a fridge and maybe even a stove, maybe even an oven, you know, uh, stuff like that, stuff that's going to allow us to do more kind of cooking things and food things because food is such a universal, universal thing for humans. Um, and we're really excited about that. And uh, we'll not miss this awkwardly, oops, awkwardly shaped kitchenette that we had here the fridge tucked in the corner and just very tight cabinet spaces over here. It was a very small space. We used very heavily and we're, we're excited to, uh, to be able to expand in future buildings. So, so I, I think the lobby looks great. I think the lobby is, um, I'm gonna actually say that, uh, I'm gonna call it done. I'm gonna say our lobby is done. So, um, got our vending machine, our benches, our DOT kiosk, that's an arcade machine, um, a nice little table out here. Yeah, that looks, that looks pretty familiar to me. Yeah, excellent. So, onward. We get to go actually into the exciting part of our library building. We get to go inside and uh, play some bookshelves and toys and video game cabinets and public computers and all the fun stuff that uh, our old library building had and will have again um, once our new building is completed. Alright, so here is the entryway. Um, we had some sliding doors here that we were able to open and close, so especially during these cold winter months. Um, uh, members of the public could come into our lobby and hang out and wait for the library proper to open. Um, so just imagine those doors are open. They're tucked away. We're ready for people to come in. It's a little empty right now though, so we better fix that. Um, so I think the, one of the first things you saw when you come in, aside from the children's area, which we'll get to, was our kind of front circulation area. Circulation is a fancy library term. Basically the front, the checkout desk, the, um, the circulation of materials being, you know, the um, ins and outs of, of all the books and stuff as it comes in, as it goes out. Um, that, that circle, circulation um, of returning and checking out. Um, so... Uh, actually, the funny thing is, when I started, <laughs> so much change has happened, even before, even before 2020. When I started building this, um, shell of our, uh, the Nancy A. Miller Marion Public Library, um, I had actually, for those of you who've been around for a while, um, had built a wall right in here, um, and we used to have a uh, counter and a wall in this space right here. Um, actually, I mean, it, was, it was something like this, roughly. Um, there was a space behind here where all along this wall back here, um, we had shelves because when people return their items, um, we would get them checked in and then we would come back out here and we would them on shelf, organized roughly by um, category or, or area of the library, um, and that was where um, they would gather until they were shelved by one of our staff members, one of our pages, um, or one of our shelvers, uh, and uh, yeah, I don't even remember when this wall came down, but we decided that it was going to be really great to actually open that up and change the way that had been done. It had been done that way for quite a number of years, I believe. Um, and so we did actually demolish that wall um, and check out the counters. Um, and there was, uh, check out the shelves and uh, kind of opened that up. So this wall became our um, 
eventually became our new releases wall. So you can see all of our new books face out, and oh boy, did that take off. Um, we definitely would have um, people coming in and commenting and saying, you don't have as many books as you used to, and we would have to be like, well, we actually do. It's just because they all keep getting checked out because people can actually see the covers. They can look at them and say, oh, you know, that looks really interesting. When um, before, when our new releases were over in this area, um, yeah, they were, you know, checked out. People checked them out. But um, you had to kind of take the book off the shelf and look at it. There's nothing wrong with that. That's a library after all. Um, but being able to see the books and then look at them definitely, um, definitely helped um, and made them more interesting and people were, you know, looking at them more and, and checking them out more, so we were really, really happy with the way that turned out. Um, and then we had our desks here, so let's, um, let's go ahead and, uh, I have some shelves, however, I mean, we're not going to get, unfortunately, for this part gonna get any cool book displays here um, or like actual books on the displays here but we can at least you know put some shelves out just kind of overlap them a little bit we got some cool lighting that's pretty cool um let's see i don't i think we five rows i think is what we had actually also have a book drop right back here and I'm just gonna actually add that right now so we had um, this corner here I was I had sort of gone down that train of thought earlier but was talking about something else and it's like ah, I don't need to talk about that um See here. So we had a book drop out on this wall here. Actually, originally it was on this wall, um, and uh, we actually ended up moving it to this wall because it made a lot more sense. Because a lot of times people would come in and be like, "Well, where do I return my books?" And it was behind them all along, and that didn't make any sense. So this is one of the pieces of custom content that um, I have downloaded. It's a custom mailbox, um, and last time we decided that the mailbox looked like a pretty good book drop. Um, so we're just going to leave that there as a, as a book drop. Um, it's a mailbox in, in real Sims terms, but you know, you could imagine opening that up and there being, you know, a place to, to put your books in. So there's our book drop. Uh, we had our coffee car here, which I'll get to in a bit. Um, and then here we had a doorway. Actually, it was a double doorway. Um, I'll just use this. There we go. Although you can kind of see our phones creeping through the wall a little bit there. Oops. I guess I better move that. Now you can't see that. Okay. Uh, oh, there we go. That looks more accurate. I knew something was missing here. Um, so we've got our book drop space here and back to the shelves. Let's see. Lovely, lovely shelves. Let's see trickier. Um, that was one of the things that I um, realized when I was building this 
guesses just how weirdly shaped this building is. And I say that with affection. Uh, but there are a lot of diagonals and very interesting configurations. And yeah, <laughs> it was a bit of a challenge to even kind of get it looking like this. Um, especially this front roof area, uh, which we'll, we'll get into the children's section, but yeah, so that was, that was definitely a challenge. So yeah, this is all diagonal right here, um, which is why you kind of, you can see things kind of snap to a grid, um, but then I, I hold down the alt key and that allows me to place them more freeform. Yes, Laura pointed out the double doors that I didn't actually add in this room, so sorry. We're gonna jump back here to the meeting rooms here. So these double doors in here um, were actually uh, hiding all of our program supplies and games and our epic Lego collection. Um, and we had hit a lot in this closet, um, sometimes more organized in more organized ways than, than other days. But um, we had a whole bunch in these closets and that's where we kind of kept um, kept a lot in those closets to, uh, to use all our markers and, and art materials and a whole bunch of acrylic paints and tempura paints. I call them tempura because it drives Miss Lara crazy. <laughs> because it's like tempura shrimp. It's like tempura paint. It's shrimp paint. Um, tempura paints and all sorts of other art materials um, and yeah everything was hidden in here so, uh, but back here yep so like I said our book drop was here so basically it um, you might not have never seen it it was basically just a big bin back here that you put your books in and it slid into the bin um, I think it was even one of those bins that um, Kind of had a spring base so the more you put in the lower it would sink um not and not like a tight spring not like if you took everything off it would just bounce up and throw things everywhere but um it, it was able so the lighter it was the higher it would be and so you wouldn't have to bend over as far to pick books up out of it it's a pretty nifty little design um, uh, yes um let me turn down the background music a little bit here There we go. That's much quieter. Um, I always, I'm so used to that background music after playing for, for so many years that um, uh, I just get used to the background music and can tune it out. So thank you for pointing that out, yes. Um, let's see here. Okay. So, uh, back to this. So we've got our wall here. I don't think I have any um, books that I can put on the shelf, like I said, unfortunately. But that's okay, you get the essence of it. Um, there's our new releases shelf right there. Um, and here's our window here that um, we had been um, using as our holds pickup window. Um, very surprising use. A lot of times this window was um, kind of forgotten. It was kind of tucked back in a corner and the door actually opened out in front of it. Um, and so uh, a lot of times that window, you know, didn't give a second thought, but once the pandemic hit and we were um, looking for ways that um, we could safely um, you know, continue to do holds and, and continue to allow people to check out books. That window became a lifesaver. Um, we were able to set out a little station right out there and use that window to, uh, you know, uh, pass out path hold or it became our holds pickup window. Um, so that was, that was a really great, a really, um, nice little, uh, nice little surprise that, that we were able to figure out. Um, and so next, let's figure out the desks here. Um, so 
I don't, our deaths were a little higher um, in the back here. Um, and we used to have, I guess, I say desks because we did still have two desks down here. We used to have a desk right out front here too, back when we had that wall. Um, we had a desk out front here, so we had kind of three areas you could go to check out. Uh, but this kind of became our self-checkout station. Um, of area. Um, so let's see if I can figure out the circulation desk area. Let's do this. That's got a nice front to it. And there was a little space right here where you could kind of sneak in and out. Um, and let's see here. So there's our smaller desk. We could do kind of this as our taller desk. It's not perfect. Let's see. Um, uh, let's see. Dining tables are going to be the same height as the desk. Uh, oh, wait. Let me, let's see if we can finagle this here. Let's, um, That's the same height, too. Hmm, let's see if we can figure that out. If not, that's okay. We can always have two short desks, too. But I like the idea of a slightly taller desk. What if I did a display case? You know, that isn't terrible. That's a little higher. Is it too high? Maybe. Ooh, wait a minute. What am I even saying? I have kitchen counters. That makes so much more sense. Let's see here. Um, let's just do a really basic counter. That, that, yes, there, there we go. That's what I needed. It's a little higher than the desk, um, but still, still looks like a desk. Let's see here. There's that. And I'm gonna add just one. Eh. That looks good. Yeah. <laughs> that looks much more like our circulation desk. It's a little bit higher here. A little bit lower over here. Yeah, that looks familiar to me. So, um, as far as our desk goes, I want to go sneak in and um, steal some of the, the wood here from these doors. Um, we had nice top to it. Ooh, that's pretty bright. I think it's just the light, mostly. Oops. There we are. So, um, for those of you, if anyone is just tuning in, um, this is um, the Nancy A. Miller Marion Public Library in the Sims 3 computer game. Um, the person you're hearing speaking is Rachel. I'm a teen services assistant um, and like to play Sims in my uh, spare time. Um, and uh, we are celebrating and fondly reminiscing uh, about um, the Nancy A. Miller Marion Public Library um, at the end of 2020 um, because 2020 has been such a big year of change, um, especially for us at the library and this building that we can look at in The Sims, but unfortunately, um, we're not able to use um, as a library um, in real life anymore. So we are using this opportunity to look back fondly on the building and share some memories. If you've got any memories that you have of, of coming to the library, of working in the library, I know we've got some staff members tuning in. Um, we would love to hear it in the comments. Um, and this is just our chance to say thank you and uh, farewell in a, in a fun, lighthearted way. So, um, uh, speaking of staff members chiming in, um, Miss Lara, who's been here for, 
I'm not going to say for how many years. I'll let Laura, Laura share that if she wants to. Um, but she's been here for quite a while. Um, it's been an invaluable part of our library. Um, uh, she says, when the library was new, there was a huge, long desk that cut the checkout area in half. Uh, with two tall towers for staff to sit at for checkout and one short desk for getting library cards. Um, so yeah, I was not around when Miss Miss Lara started. Um, so she's got even even more iterations of this front area um, to remember than I do. Um, let's see here. All right, so back to the checkout desk area. I'm just gonna. Give it a slightly dimmer kind of top here. I know it wasn't all wood at these desks. I think I'll do that. That's fine. That is fine with me. Okay. I like that. I'll do that. That just changes the accent a little bit. Um, and now I know we have computers. Um, so unfortunately with the way... I'm gonna do it that way. What am, I, what am I saying? Let's do it that way. That makes more sense to me. I'm gonna flip those here. And let's see, I don't like the way that looks at the bottom there, so I'm gonna, um, let's see here, there we go, that looks better, perfect, okay, alright, so here's our front desk area. Oh no, wait, I did have it right. I was gonna say, I need to learn to complete my thoughts here. For one, computers are not, you can't set them on counters, unfortunately. Um, oh shoot, and this desk isn't going to allow me to place them that way. And I do not have the little mod that allows me to place it elsewhere. Well, okay, let's let's take a look at this again here. Um, let's do this one. That's fine, we can do it that way. This one will get the computer sitting slightly more in the middle. Gotta work with what you can here. There we go. And there's our computer space. Yeah, that looks nice. All right. Let's change the blue mouse color. We didn't really have blue mice there. There we go. That looks just fine. All right, yes, yeah, so I was... Man, I'm getting all off topic. I'm going to stay on topic here. We had two computers here. Unfortunately, in The Sims, you can't place a computer on the top here. I flipped these around because I realized it makes more sense for the counter to go out because that's where patrons would stand. Um, and then we would stand behind this side um, here and uh, obviously help check out books, answer questions, um, all, sorts of, all sorts of stuff. Our staff is always happy to help. But I do have a computer. I can fit a computer down here. So let's put one there. And I'm just going to put a chair there. Oh, ours were never quite that bright of orange. So I'm just going to change that to a nice, neutral, kind of dark gray black. Um, that more closely matches the, the chair we had out at our desk here. Um, there. There is a front desk area um, where our staff is happy to help you out. Um, we had a few more um, tables and stuff back here. Um, the plant, let's, let's put the plant here. We had a plant back here. And there actually was a window right here too. See, I'm already getting off topic again. Let's place the window first though. Uh, let's see. It 
was kind of a square window. Um, and let's see here. Um, just looking at all the different kinds of windows I have. So um, The Sims um, comes out with different um, they call them packs of different types of things. Um, so you can see all these little symbols in the corner just show what pack they came from. Um, and so that's what all the little symbols mean, um, if you were wondering that. Let's see. Um, it doesn't have to be anything super special. Let's just do, let's just do that. A nice, basic window. And we'll, of course, give it the lovely color of the frame. And there we are. There's our window. Um, and then there was usually a plant in front of it. Um, not super obscuring plant, but pardon me, a plant nonetheless. Let's maybe give it a big palm though. Eh, that's maybe a little too big. I, I like that palm. I like the smaller one a little better. Let's do a nice little small plant here. And the base of that doesn't matter so much. And then we did have a little table um, in the corner here with some extra staff materials. So let's um, just do this one. This is fine. Um, I bet, though, it will allow me to place some sort of cash register. Um, we are uh, now happy and proud to be um, a fine free uh, library along with Cedar Rapids and Hiawatha, um, meaning that um, even now, even without this library building, um, we do not charge overdue fines. Um, so uh, books still have due dates, you still have to return uh, we ask that you still return items on time, um, but if you do forget or you know drop it off a day late, you don't get charged an overdue fee. Um, you still get notices if it's overdue, and if it's overdue past a certain amount of time, um, we charge you for the item as if it were lost. Um, but uh, yeah, we don't charge overdue fines anymore, and we're all really, really excited about that. It was. Uh, a really great thing to be able to to do that for our community because um, it helps eliminate barriers. Um, people who use the library who have a lot of fines may um, really need the library and uh, if they have a lot of fines and they can't use it then that's just limiting access and um, you know we are really really happy to be able to um, free that up and, and still be able to give them access um, in a way that is fair and uh, just really, really opens up a lot of doors. So we're really excited about that. Um, but there still was a cash register back here. Um, let's see. Here we go. Here's a oh books register. Look at that. Um, uh, I think this actually has to go on a counter. So let's just go ahead and. Put a little counter back here, that's fine. There we go, look at that. A books register, how perfect is that? All right, excellent. So for, I suppose I, um, we're starting to get this to come together. I suppose I never recolored our shelving here. So let's, uh, kind of weird. The, see, and again, now that I'm looking at this, I'm going, that looks right. Why does that look right? It's because this bluey, silvery color was actually the color that we repainted the walls with. So originally when I built the shell, we were using the old wallpaper. And now I'm looking at this going, wait a minute, that wallpaper is supposed to be a different color. I'm not going to worry about that today. But that makes a lot more sense now. Why I was, why my brain was was a little confused by that. So, <laughs> um, yeah, actually, I I do like that color. Um, I'm gonna 
keep the that blue metal cover, because why not? But I'm gonna change that light color and just make it blend in with the back wall a little bit more. And then comes the tedious but nice process again, as I was saying, of um, the fact that you can customize everything to, to such a high degree. Um, so I'm just dragging the style that I have for that first shelf and applying it to all the other shelves. So there we are. Here's our new releases shelf, wall shelves. That looks good. Um, yeah, and I could totally imagine staff members out here and, and helping out. Um, that's really, that's really nice. So, yep, we've got our book drop area back here. And now I think the only other thing I'm missing um, is the self-checkout area, which we got some very nice, fancy new self-checkout machines that um, one of them still exists and lives at our 7th Avenue location currently. Um, but those will be making a reappearance at our new building. Um, let me think here. What I could do some cool arcade game kind of stations. That'd be fun. Um, I could kind of combine them. That's pretty busy looking. Um, so that's an option for a, for a self-checkout station. Um, what else is there? I've got some like audio stations, so I could do that and then I could put like a table in front of it. Um, I've also got this one, this cool speaker, it's actually a stereo. Um, it doesn't have a screen though, I kind of like that, that looks like it has a screen. Ooh, I could do a jukebox. A jukebox of the future. Very nifty. That looks like almost like a, some sort of vending machine, but it's a jukebox. Um, let's see, what else do I have? I mean, I could just do like a table with a computer on it. Um, oh, I could do like a <laughs> TV, a very retro TV. There's no. There you go. Yeah, you can kind of see it better back there. I could do a retro TV. I mean, the antenna are maybe a little, a little out of date. Um, I could do that. Not this TV. We got options. We're just kind of playing around and looking and seeing what is closest to um, kind of what we remember here. I'm feeling like electronics are going to be the way to go. Um, but let's just check out entertainment. I suppose I could do a magic mirror. Here. It's a checkout station. But, um, yeah, I know that was really bad. I'm sorry. But that would be funny if I did a mirror. <laughs> I could do a mirror. Um, yeah. Okay, now I'm kind of liking the mirror idea. I'm not going to lie. Let's, let's go. Let's go take a look at our mirrors here. <laughs> A uh, checkout station. Oof. Oof, that's bad. I'm so sorry. Um, but I could do it. I, I, I could do it. Let's see. And I, we do have that. I do have a desk here that's kind of swoopy. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, that also, like, that stereo looks okay. I could do the stereo and the mirror. Huh. <laughs> I know there is a slight delay between what I'm playing and the stream. Um, so if I ever ask a question, pause for a really long time. I am just waiting for responses to come in. But while we're saving, what do you think? Should I do Should I do the pun? Should I go for the pun and make a checkout station? Um, or is there another option you guys really like? It's a self-check. Yes, a self-checkout station. All right, you know what? Okay, I'm doing the pun. I'm gonna get rid of all these TVs. The TVs are great. We already used an arcade machine. Let's let's do the self. Let's do the checkout station. All right, for sure. Let's let's do it. 
Um, so again, I'm trying to remember, I think this was more of an angle? I think it was kind of like that. Maybe not quite that angly. I should know, because as a teen services assistant, um, I did a lot of lock-ins with the teens, usually on a Friday night from for about three hours, and we played a lot of hide-and-seek in this library. That is a well-kept secret um, for those of you tuning in um, or watching this. We played a lot of hide-and-seek in the library after hours when it was closed, and it was a blast. And uh, probably that is my fondest memory of working at the at, in this particular building, um, was getting to play hide-and-seek um, with uh, teenagers in the library. It was, I mean, each, each time was something different. Um, I would always wear black so I could kind of blend into the shadows. Um, and I remember this because um, when we were moving stuff around, when we were kind of redoing this front area, um, uh, we, when we got rid of this front desk here, that kind of opened up this area a lot more. Um, and I rem definitely remember hiding kind of under the self-check area a few times um, because we'd always start here. The, the seeker would start at this front door here um, and count really loudly and everyone else would scatter throughout the whole library to go hide. And um, uh, they uh, I, sometimes they would miss you if you were hiding right really close to where they were. They'd walk by you and you couldn't see them or they couldn't see you. Um, you just watch their feet rock by and, you know, kind of laugh because they missed you. Um, so that was a good hiding spot for sure. Not my favorite hiding spot. We'll get to my favorite hiding spot. I'm not going to be able to recreate it fully, but it was the best hiding spot in the library and the best kept secret in, in my opinion. Um, professional opinion. I can say it in my professional opinion because um, <laughs> I was doing this... Uh, uh, professionally and it was a blast definitely one of my favorite memories of this building was finding all the different places to hide uh, good times um, by the end uh, though we had a small but recurring group of group of teens who uh, knew where all my hiding spots were so they knew to check there so um, by the end of it I was actually using kind of a strategy where one of them, like, they wouldn't be the official seeker, and it was the official seeker who kind of had to find you. Um, and so uh, they'd find me, and I'd be like, shh, don't tell, and they'd be like, sure, and then they'd run off to go tell, and so I'd move, and so they'd all come back to the spot, and I wouldn't be there. <laughs> and they would be like, wait a minute, like, where did she go? And everyone would be really confused. Um, and it was, it was a blast. It was a really good time, so... Um, let's see here. So yeah, we're going to put the self-check, oops, there, the self-check, yes, um, and definitely had two sides, so we're just going to, um, we're just going to put a mirror on both sides, why not? There we go, and... So we'll put a stereo here too, just for a little added, added flair. Make it look a little more high tech. That works for me. Yeah, it's a, it's a checkout, <laughs> self checkout. That's good. I like that. That uh, that brings a smile to my face. <laughs> so these were. Um, I give it a little bit more gloss here. going to make them all black because they were um, very nifty looking. Um, there we go. There's our, our self-checkout station. And I think one of the last little details we can use here is um, we had a TV here. Now, let's see. Technically more like this TV, but that's not going to fit on a double wall, so we'll do the smaller TV. Um, 
that we used. Um, we had like library announcements and program announcements and all sorts of things flashing across the TV. Um, uh, it's a really nice way to, um, really easy way to have a kind of rotating advertisements. Um, and now we do need the coffee cart. Um, let me think here. Coffee cart, coffee cart. Again, the carts um, are the tricky part here. Let me actually check, make sure I even have a coffee machine. I should. Yep, hot drink machine. So there's that one. This one maybe looks a little closer. Um, it's even got some tea. I like that one. It's a little smaller. Okay, so surfaces. Okay, I don't know if it's gonna go on a wall shelf. We can try. Uh, no, it will not. So, um, let's see here. Dining table, end table. I do have a kind of metal-y one, and I know it was a metal. This might only be able to go on a counter though too, so. Looking at this, let's just go straight to counters and not worry about it. Um, here's a here's a cool looking counter. Um, yeah, okay, let's do that. That works. Absolutely. I never noticed that has a very interesting um, angle to it. Huh, that is a little something I've never noticed. Um, okay, that's fine. That works. Let's see, and that was kind of a silver, if I remember correctly. So let's just copy over the silver from this table, since I already have that out and about. Sure, that works for me. That's fine. We'll do that. Um, and then our coffee. We'll just make it a nice plain silver. Make it a little darker. And there we are. Here's our little coffee station. And our self-check station. And our circulation desks. Yeah. Well, it looks... Yeah. I like that. It's very nice. Cool. So yeah, that was really kind of one of the first things you see when you walk in is this this front desk um, with librarians waiting to help you. Awesome. It's looking good in my opinion. It's starting to look a little more familiar, huh? Excellent. Okay. Well... Let's go ahead, let's do our holds area here. I'm gonna add some more lighting here. There we go. There we go. Okay. Um, let's see here. So our holds area are just bookshelves. Oops, uh, there we go. Let's just go ahead and do our very tall bookshelves here. Whoa, I mean, they weren't that tall. <laughs> uh, I could do these since they're a little more open. Eh. Could do those. Those are a little shorter. Too short still. Eh. Yeah, that one's actually not bad. This doesn't quite fit that though. It's a two um, two tile bookshelf, as you can see. It's got two tiles on the bottom. Let's see here. Yeah, that's okay. Maybe I'll just stick with the tall one. Oh, or I was gonna consider these. So these are very weird looking and modular, um, but the nice thing about them is they have a, quite a few, um, a longer matching one that I thought might be interesting to use for the shelves out in the 
rest of the library. Um, just because they're so kind of uniform and matchy. Um, I mean, otherwise we, I was thinking we could do just lots of these because these are nice and they uh, fit really nicely together. They just, not on a diagonal, of course, but um, when you're putting them next to each other, they do just slide in really nicely next to each other and make a nice uniform look. And they're stock full, just like our shelves were pretty packed um, a lot of the time. Um, even with the number of books that people would have checked out, we still had a lot of books that um, would sometimes struggle to fit on the shelves um, just because we needed the books because people were checking them out and we... we have a community that loves to read, which is awesome, um, and, and has a lot of varied interests. Um, but we just, you know, honestly, we even in this building, we didn't have the space that we that we ultimately needed, um, especially towards the end here, um, which is why the building project was already in place even before 2020 um, was happening. We were working on those next steps, our next chapter. Yeah, so maybe maybe these are really the ones I should use. Um, although these are really cool. Here, and I kind of like the slanted look to them. I'm going to stick with the, uh, the really tall ones for now. Um, but perhaps we will change that up as, as we're looking. Let's go ahead. These I think are only one color, two. So let's go ahead and duplicate this darker metal. Yeah, that looks okay. The thing about this though is you can add more of an accent color in here. this and make yeah okay never mind I'm changing my mind already I I like that you can make this two-toned um, I think I might just see kind of even change it up just a little bit too so the shelves are still the metal but I'm just gonna give it that look just to, to for a little more variation sorry yeah okay let's do that I like that holds area. A uh, little too long for the space, but we will get some use out of that for sure. Okay. Here we go. All lining up. There we go. Yeah, that looks familiar. He's even as tall as the other ones. Yeah, okay, so they're even a little bit shorter. That works out pretty well. Yeah, look at that. Just some nice holds bookshelves. So this is, you know, where you'd go to pick up the books you'd put on hold, that you'd put on reserve. Um, and, uh, yeah, well. That makes me, makes me nostalgic. Just, you know, we're finally starting to put bookshelves in here. That's really, really great. All right. Well, look at that. We, uh, we have a circulation area with our coffee maker, with our book drop, with a, um, the TV showing all our library announcements. Um, we've got our self-check station. Um, we've got our two circulation desks and a uh, computer with our cash register, a plant. We've got our new releases wall shelf and we've got our hold area. That's looking really wonderful. 
I think the one thing I am missing is I do need to put a couple chairs in front of this lower desk here because this desk is where you would go um, if you wanted a library card. Um, and it was, um, I witnessed a lot of really great interactions at that desk. Um, uh, you know, people who were brand new to the community, people who had been here for years and hadn't really ever thought about getting a library card, people who had lived here as a kid and, and moved back with, with their children. Um, it was always really cool to, to sit there and, and get to welcome people to Marion, to the library, um, and share all of the, the wonderful things that we have and the things that we do, um, and to um, surprise and, and delight them um, with, with all sorts of things that we, that we offered. Um, it was always, you know, one of those things, you, you could only tell them so much at one time, otherwise you were just going to overload them with all the, with all the awesome things that, that we had going on. Um, and still have going on, um, but it was always, you know, this is, you know, this is the basic stuff you need to know, um, you know, oh, we do this, and we do this, and oh, we also do this, but uh, check out our website, and ask us if you have any questions, like, we're always here to help, we're always happy to help, uh, and uh, it was really wonderful to, uh, to be able to interact like that, and uh, enjoy the the, the looks of joy on their faces, especially, you know, when someone, when a, when a child's getting their first library card and they're so excited and they are carefully, you know, signing their name on the back as best they can. And, um, yeah, just all those little moments are, um, you know, moments that aren't unique to this building. Um, we remember them fondly taking place in this building, but those are going to continue to happen in the new one for sure. So... Let me definitely add those chairs. Um, so we got new chairs, um, but I'm just gonna use some of the old ones, I think. A blue one and a red one for old time's sake. There we go. Yeah, there's our circulation desk. Awesome. We had signs hanging from the ceiling. I don't think I have any signs. Ceiling signs, anyway. Um, I suppose I've got a cheat code on right now that allows me to just um, place items, excuse me, without having to put them on a wall, um, even if they have a wall. Well, I do have some glowing signs. Those are very large, though. I don't um, think those are quite going to fit. Um, Neon, I could do a neon sign. Circulation desk. Um, yeah, I don't think I have any ceiling signs. But, yes, check out. Check out is, I believe, what that sign said. There was a holds or reserves sign hanging over here. Um, which was great. And then this had a sign that said new releases. So, All right. Well, um, from circulation... We are going to go, here are our study rooms. Let's go ahead and um, just put our desks in the study rooms here. Um, looking at the kinds of desks we have. I think this one's probably the, the simplest. So I'm just gonna go ahead and stick all of those in there. It was really just a counter mostly. Um, it was more of a counter desk than anything. Um, I will just go ahead and do that. And then they did have a shelf up above it, too. Oops, looks like I didn't place that one centered. And let's get some lights in here as well. We'll just do these ones. Um, these are nice. Um, Again, um, for those of you who may not heard earlier, um, I have all of these circles and everything. Um, they're lights, um, so you can actually see in the building, because uh, unfortunately the light from the windows, uh, we 
except in the children's area. I mean, there weren't a lot of, like, natural windows that brought in a lot of light. A lot of the light came from the, the overhead lights. Um, and I want to make sure you can see what we're doing here and can see the space. So that's what these all are. Um, and the nice thing is uh, these actually, when you're playing in The Sims and have your person and people wandering, your Sims wandering around um, in live mode, which is what that's called, um, the lights actually disappear. They become invisible. Um, and so all of these don't show up when you're wandering around, which is, which is nice. So... All right, so we've got these tables in here. Now we better get our upper shelves. And maybe I'll make these wooden if I can. Um, where are my here? Cabinets. Displays, yeah. Let's see. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, there we go. That looks good. Just break it down a little bit. All right. Hard to see in there, but that looks that looks good to me. Um going to, I think I'm going to make these more wooden than white, just for a little bit of accent. They still got a little band of white, you can just barely see it there, but it's hard to get an angle in this. I'm just going to make these wooden. Okay. Then there was a trash can in every room, and oh, um, I guess I did not color the walls there, so we better go get some wallpaper in there. I will try and do that. It's not that. There we go. Got a very light purple gray. Sure. It might be a little more blue than purple. That's fine. I think we'll go with that. the wallpaper was um, the same as outside, but we'll, we'll switch it up a little bit. We'll... Alright, we'll do a couple red chairs, a couple blue chairs. Technically, these all had two chairs in them. So I could do a table instead of a desk. That might make sense. But it's fine. We'll just leave one chair in each. So, yep, you can see into the study rooms. Yeah. Nice. There were lights underneath the counters. Ooh, we could try and do that. Okay. Now let's see here. Wall lamps. There's the lamps under the under the shelves in there. Get a slightly better angle. You don't get the wall, but you can see the effect. Um, now this study room A, A, B, C, D, E, and F. Um, we're gonna have to get fancy with this. I think. No. Works. It went technically all the way to the corner, but we'll, um, we'll have to improvise a little bit. There we go. It's fine. That's, I mean, it's fine. <laughs> Maybe we'll do that. You can't really see it. We're not going to be doing the staff area back here. Um, we're just going to be doing the what's outside here. So let's get a red chair. And let's get a blue chair, because this was our larger meeting space. Oh, that's probably not gonna... Oh, come on. There we go. Okay. 
That's fine. There we go. Two chairs in study room A. And... Let's see if this works too. Sure, let's do that. That's just fine. Cool. Alright, study room A is done. And then I believe the last thing we'll need in each one is a trash can. Can't forget those trash cans. Um, let's see. Small appliances. Let's just do recycling bits again. That's good. Okay. Put them on each side of the door. Not really. They weren't even this wide. They were probably even a little smaller, but I had to build everything in sim proportions. So there we are. There's all our different study rooms. Very nice. Yeah. Very popular as well. Um, it was always nice to have a quiet place to study. Um, we're gonna have even more study rooms in our new building um, and we're for different age groups too so um, it won't just be all the same for um, for everyone um, although anyone can use them but we are gonna have special spaces for different age groups um, that we're quite excited about so yes um, if you are um, just tuning in again um, this is our New Year's Eve farewell to the Nancy A. Miller Marion Public Library building in the computer game, The Sims 3. Uh, my name is Rachel. Uh, I am a teen services assistant and I love to play The Sims games in my spare time. Um, and we're using this as a chance to um, say thank you and goodbye to uh, the building that we've served out of for 24 years um, that we had to abruptly move out of in August after the derecho um, and we are sad to be leaving but really excited about what the future holds for the library and our new library building. Um, if you are interested in learning more about the new library building um, or interested in donating to the Our Next Chapter library building campaign, um, fundraiser, um, please visit our website. It's marionpubliclibrary.org uh, and uh, you can find all sorts of information about the new building, the new building project on our website. Um, there's a whole tab devoted to it um, on our website um, that is uh, let me double check the name here real quick. I don't want to tell you something wrong. It is the, um, our, oh, it's our next chapter. That makes so much sense. So right on our homepage, marionpubliclibrary.org, um, the very first menu on the on the left-hand side in the, in the gray menu bar is our next chapter. Um, so if you click there, um, it's all about building Marion's future, um, building our library's future. Um, you can see renderings of the new building, um, you can find more information about um, the needs analysis that we did, frequently asked questions. Um, any questions you have that aren't answered on that page, definitely feel free to reach out to the library. Um, our um, interim director, Kelly Dibvig, is always happy to answer any questions um, and uh, share whatever we can um, about the, the new building project. Um, so. We're looking forward to that um, and using today as uh, a chance to say goodbye and to uh, to reminisce and and in a way you know thank this building for for what it allowed us to do for 24 years so we're very excited so so far we've got our meeting rooms done we have our lobby done um, our front circulation area done and we just did the study rooms um, so next, I think since we just did the study rooms, we might as well hang out here for a little bit. And um, sorry, I'm zooming around very quickly. I'm trying to go slowly. Um, and we're going to do the this area next. Um, so this was our um, DVD. Uh, kind of audio area or digital area you might say um, over here what I'm messing with right now um, 
so, oh boy, oh, let me save this here. So, um, <clears throat> this area here, if you can see my cursor, kind of just to the right of the saving location here, um, originally, a long time ago, way before I started, I've only been here about five years, um, uh, but when we opened in 1996, this was our computer lab. So this area right here housed our four computers, four internet computers. And in 1996, that was the height of, you know, technology and the height of, of what we were able to offer. Um, for context, um, smartphones didn't exist in 1996. Um, iTunes didn't even exist in 1996. Um, like, I mean, there were, you know, iPods, no iPods, um, you know, internet oftentimes was dial up, um, you know, you hear that screeching sound. Um, so if you think, if you think about it that way, if you think about when this library was built and how far we've come, <laughs> even just in technology <laughs> is, I mean, wild. <laughs> um, and I mean, part, uh, a part of the reason why um, we were so eager um, and anticipating getting a new building is because the way this library was built in 1996 and you know in the 90s did not accommodate or even prepare us for the huge amounts of technology growth and um, you know the technology that we that we want to be able to provide to our community um it just it wasn't the infrastructure wasn't there it just didn't exist um and i mean obviously that's something that every building built during that time is, is dealing with in different ways um but in order to continue to serve our community as the best we can like that's i mean that's a crucial part of it is is the technology and the infrastructure to be able to provide that so yes this area was our computer lab um, I don't know fully what happened if it how long it stayed our computer lab um, I don't know that history for sure um, if anybody does feel free to chime in, in the comments um, I know for a very long time it was our um, an area for our friends the friends of the Marion library um, uh, which is a uh, nonprofit organization that supports the library, the bookstore out in the lobby, everything was, that was all run by the friends um, and friends groups in libraries um, raise money that is then directly provided back to the library to support programs, events, collections, all the books and, and media, all sorts of things. Um, so they are a wonderful resource and for a long time this was their sorting room. So all the donations that were brought in were um, given to our friends 99% um, of the time and um, the other 1% might be if um, we could see something that we immediately knew we needed you know another copy of that on the shelf we were able to, to add that pretty quickly but otherwise it was given to our friends which they could then donate to our um, back to to us um, uh, or the books were you know they, the books that were donated to them the funds they got from that were then donated back to us so um, but all you know all the donated books and everything was sorted in this room um, and then a couple of years ago um, again just due to the space that we are rearranging and the very cramped staff quarters um, for a staff of our size it was pretty cramped we had people sharing desks and um, uh, we made this our children's office so it was right next to our children's space um, Miss Lara who has been around since 2000 um, says they crammed two more computers into the lab room and then moved them in 2002 and added four more for a total of 10 computers. Um, so they were super high tech um, in 2002. Um, it was, yeah, it was great. So um, yeah, that's just for context, that's what that is. But this is now a children's office. Um, we won't bother, or children's staff office. Um, I'm not gonna bother decorating that, um, but right next door is our conference room. So we better get that going, huh? Um, Let's see here. I'm just gonna 
zoom out and add a light. And then I need to squish over to our meeting rooms. We did have a very long table in the middle there. Let's, where's my very long dining table? Uh, that's a glass top one. That doesn't really work. Let's use, yeah, let's use this one. And again, bring in some chairs. I'm just gonna set a couple out here. Bring in some blue chairs. We eventually had a, um, again, as I, I, I think I mentioned earlier, we eventually did replace those chairs with different chairs. Um, and, uh, but I'm, I'm gonna stick with the old blue blue and red chairs because um, we still had uh, those hanging about, so. Oh, let's see here. Um, let's do that. Okay. And then a wooden, wooden table legs. That's fine. Oh yeah, that's, that's actually, it was a little more rounded and a little wider. Um, but that actually did have that wooden border on it, so that's nice. And, oops, this. And then, yeah, that, that top is not right for sure. Let's go steal the top from this. It was all, I mean, a lot of the same furnishing colors, and there we go, that looks a little better. And, gotta swoosh back here really quickly and nab the whiteboard. I mean, our whiteboards were wall mounted, but The Sims comes with a whiteboard, so we'll stick with that. All right. So this table could actually see closer to 12 versus the eight that it does um, right here. And honestly, usually we didn't even have a chair on the, eh, we sometimes had a chair on the end there. I'll throw that there. There we go. Here's our conference room. Oh, and I better paint the walls in there too. Oh, I didn't even see that had a, a base. I'm trying to remember. We had baseboards. I don't think we did have baseboards. But that's okay. We'll just keep them a nice fresh white. We'll pretend. If we did, they were wooden, but I'm pretty sure we didn't have baseboards. But that's okay. All right, and we had a few photos in here. I remember um, just from a personal note, um, this is the room where I did my interview when I was hired and I uh, went into the room first and got to choose which side of the room I wanted to sit on. And I sat on the side where I could see a picture of a horse behind them because I, um, just personally rode horses in, in high school. Um, and so that, you know, that just made me feel a little more at home, you know, just those little, little things. We had quite a bit of artwork hanging around. Um, actually, speaking of, I know we had a piece of artwork hanging on this wall that was of a train. So I'm just gonna throw the car picture. Oops. Just gonna throw a car picture there because I don't think we, I have any train pictures, but I'm just gonna throw a nice car picture right there in memory of the, of the train. Um, so let's see here. I was thinking I had a specific horse picture, but I don't believe I have that one installed currently. So um, I know we also for a long time had a map of Marion in there. Um, and I know, let's see. for a specific game with our university expansion pack. Where is it? Oh, here it is. Um, I know there's a wall or a map. This is a world map, um, but that, that's okay. That'll work. Um, for horses, I'm not seeing the horse one that I'm thinking of, but that's okay. Let's just put um, a little dancing bunny right there. That's kind of cute. Yeah, that'll work. Yeah, 
little dancing bunny, and over here we had a couple, like a set, I believe. Um, let's see. I could put some haunted paintings in here. Now that would be fun. Um, the library definitely had a uh, ghost. Um, I say that in a weird tone of voice because the building wasn't actually haunted, but uh, we always like to say that uh, we had a ghost in our basement named Francis, um, who, um, you know, if someone was looking for a spooky story, we, you know, I, I'd brought this out a couple times and say that uh, he would um, come out at night and, and he really liked to live in the spaces between books and, and sleep there at night. And, uh, he, uh, so that's why you needed to check out a lot of books because you needed to make room for Francis to sleep in, in the middle of the night. So, um, that was Francis the ghost. Um, and so we might as well throw a few haunted paintings in here. So these paintings are special. They came with, uh, um, Supernatural, um, the Sims Supernatural expansion pack. Um, and at night they change um, into different pictures, like the creepy haunted pictures. It's pretty cool. I don't think they do it if I just change the day and night outside. I think it actually has to be night, but we'll just throw those in there. Those are kind of nice. They look like old town kind of Marion stuff, right? They could. This one kind of looks, looks more Marion-esque, I think. Um, although it also might, no, no, I think that's a, it's supposed to be a school. It's good, it could be an old school. Yeah, I think so. Um, here we go, and here's the conference room, just with some random paintings on the walls. That's just fine. So, okay, so we did the conference room, and now we're getting to the DVDs. Um, so these shelves were a little shorter, too. So I might go back and use the ones I had used out in the lobby at the, for the Friends area, Friends bookstore area. I could also use, these are like more comic books. Yeah, I think I'll just use the ones I had used out in the lobby here. I'm trying to go slow here. Don't want to make anyone super dizzy or um, zoom around too fast. Um, okay, let's see here. So, let's see. Okay, there were a couple columns here. And I'm trying to figure out how do I want to do the columns. I think I might just let's see what columns I have. They were square. Maybe I'll just do the same columns I did out in the lobby, but yeah, I like those. Okay, just do those. Um, same design. We'll just paint them the, the same color as our wall here, um, and that will work. That, that's coordinated. All right. All right. So we got about an hour and two minutes left um, until we're counting down, or an hour, I guess, until we're we're counting down to to noon. Um, but our library is. Uh, you know, taking shape and we're uh, sharing memories. So if you've got any any memories um, or, or anything you'd, you'd love to, to say and, you know, think about, um, it, it, you know, something you experienced or, uh, you know, any, any fond memories of this building that you have, we would love to hear it. Um, let's see here. So there definitely was a column there. There was a column right about here, and there was a column here. Yeah, I'll say that. That's good. Don't think I'm missing any columns in the main part of the building, so. If 
I am, just let me know. But yeah, I think those were the call placements. So, all right. So here are our DVD shelves. I think I'm gonna do two. This, that makes them a little long, but that's okay. I think maybe actually these were. Oops. Okay, well, let's just save then. I think the columns maybe were even a little bit further to the left there. Um, we'll give them a little more, a little more space. Um, I know when I started, we had an aisle right down the middle, so you could see there were shelves on both sides, um, but then we condensed and combined. Eh, that seems okay. I'm, we'll just go with it, that's fine. And I know these shelves are also slightly tilted, but since I have to line them all up and, and double side them, I'm just going to okay, so just going to um, do them straight here. That is I'm not finishing that thought. That is uh, the easier way for me to do it. Uh, Dwight says, this is a pretty cool library sim game. Thank you. Thank you, Dwight. We're glad you joined us. Never seen a library do this before. Oh, that's great to hear. I um, am really glad that I can uh, share kind of my, my personal hobbies um, for the library and with the library. It's been a really fun experience for me um, to be able to do that. Uh, let's see here. Uh, cool. All right. Okay. Yeah, that'll work, I think. Uh, I think I could probably squeeze. We had had a number of shelves in here. I think I'm gonna squeeze one more row of shelves in here. Um, I think I can do that. Yeah, oh yeah, I can do that for sure. All right, that, and we can do one more row of shelves. So these are our DVDs, our audiobooks, our playaways. TV shows, uh, all that good stuff right in here. Um, in our new library building, um, uh, especially at least the DVDs are going to be located in what we're calling our marketplace section. Um, our marketplace uh, is going to be right on the first floor and it's kind of our quick, you know, the, the hot items, I guess you could say. The, um, you know the DVDs that you know everyone's everyone's looking for, and the um, we're probably gonna have large print down there, and and you know the things you don't necessarily need to travel up to another floor or, or further in to get. It's just gonna be right there, right in front. It'll be easy to grab, easy to spot. Um, it'll be really nice. Um, these we got as close as we could up front. So yeah, there we go. There's our here's our DVD section. That looks pretty pretty correct. Our ceilings were obviously a lot higher than this. Um, you can see, finally see the ceiling when I zoom down in. Um, and the shelves were, I mean, the shelves were higher too, but again, we're working with what we've got and uh, it's pretty cool to see it all take shape. Um, yeah, so we have this area done. Um, I guess what we should do next too, though, is in this corner over here, um, is we are going to add our copier and printer section. Now, Sims don't have any need to copy and print. Something can maybe a washer dryer combo? <laughs> Is that weird? I mean, I could maybe do like a dishwasher. Um, Cause yeah, like a table wouldn't really do much. I don't think there's any plumbing features that would really match that. And maybe like a dresser? I suppose I could do a 
dresser, but I mean, this is really the only kind of one we have, and it's a little tall. So, you know, I think I might actually do like a washer dryer copy machine. Let's do the top one, kind of make it look like, uh, <laughs> make it look like, uh, um, like you could lift the lid and then copy something there. Why not? Let's do it. Um, let's just go like that. There, um, if you're just tuning in earlier, I was talking about, um, getting to play hide and seek in the library, um, with teenagers after dark. Um, super awesome. And this right here was also a really good hiding spot because um, there was just enough room for a teenager and or, um, what's the word I wanna use? Flexible adult <laughs> um, to hide back there. And uh, I one time was hiding in one of these study rooms. We always left the door open to all these study rooms. And I was hiding under a desk so I could see right into that area. It's not lined up perfectly here, but in the real library, I could see right into that area and I could see another person hiding and the number of times people were running past them. Okay, they weren't supposed to run. Walking quickly past them, you know, pushing that limit. Um, they, uh, I just like make eye contact with them and we just both like shake our heads. Like, I can't believe you didn't see me. Like I was right there. There was a light, like an emergency light kind of right in this area too. So you could see right behind, like in that area, it wasn't particularly dark, but people just didn't think to look like over and down. It was a great spot, so. Um, okay, so I've got our quote copy machines here. <laughs> oh, this is great, okay. Um, yeah, let's do, ooh, no, that's not right. I'm just gonna make them more white here because they were, they were a white color. Um, I'm just gonna do that, that's fine. Copy that, so there are our copy machines. I know for sure we had a recycling bin. I think the recycling, we had two actually. One was a trash can, but I'm just gonna put two recycling bins there. Um, and then we had a computer, uh, um, an OPAC, um, library speak, uh, like a book lookup station. Um, where you could check a, look at our catalog and search for a book. Um, we had one there. Um, and we had the computer, oh, we had, yeah, we had the computer release station there. So, um, actually, I know there was a recycling bin there. Okay, let's see if we can, I can figure out how to get our computer release stations here. So I don't, uh, I definitely don't have anything that's gonna look exactly like the kind of table we had there, and that's fine. Um, I may just try and do like a table. I might just do that. Um, I don't know, are the computers gonna work here? Oh, they will, okay. Perfect, okay. Well, I may just, goodbye hiding spot, you were, well, well used for that purpose. There we go, I can, there we go. I can squeeze in a hiding spot. I don't think any flexible adult or even a flexible teenager could fit back there right now, but it's the principle of the thing, right? Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and give it the same wood color there. There we go. And I'm just gonna zoom out again really quickly and snag that. Same computer color here. That's better. Okay. All right, and I know I'm pretty sure because I, I told people, oh, the copier's right under the picture of the flower. So I think we had a flower picture here. So I'm just gonna do the sunflower picture right here. That looks fine with our, with our copiers, <laughs> our washing machine copiers. Um, and our little hide and seek spot there, so. All right, so I know for sure, I'm pretty sure we had a, sorry, I'm trying not to, trying not to zoom around, but I do have the edge scrolling on, so. Um, this just means every time I move to an edge, the camera moves. Um, uh, I know we had another, we did eventually move our lookup station right here as well. Um, 
So let me choose a table for that. I could just do that, that's fine. Let's take another trash can there. There we go, that'll work. All right. So, let's see here, all right. You know, I don't think we're gonna be able to do this all in three hours. So let's get to the real heart of things. Let's start placing more books because I think the bookshelves are really, really what's gonna make the space. Um, so I'm gonna get the long bookshelves here and I will hopefully get to be able to do the computer, yeah. Um, I know I am, Unfortunately, missing some windows here um, on the outside here, and a few doors as well. Um, I had 2020 being what it was had um, unfortunately um, lost that save that I did back in April for our Teen Tech time. Um, that had done a few more a few more things back here with the windows and such. Um, fortunately, lost that save. 2020 being what it was, it ate it, and uh, so a little further behind than perhaps I was in April. But that is a okay. We're just gonna go with what we've got and start placing some bookshelves here. So, um, for those of you that um, remember, our information desk was right in this area here. Um, We'll get to that if we have time. Um, we had our computers over here in this area. Um, this back here, um, when uh, the derecho hit in August, was our reference area. Um, and we had little alcoves back here with tables. And then all of this was our fiction section, adult fiction, and then the adult nonfiction. Um, we had a few CDs back here. And then we had our teen space back in this area. Being a teen library assistant, I am biased. That was my favorite part of the library. Um, but I know for a lot of people, um, a lot of the memories were, um, you know, in this area, and then as well, especially back in up in this kids area. Um, this actually is the door that leads down to our basement, um, where um, was. Uh, where we went when the, when the derecho hit um, and uh, sheltered us just like it was supposed to. Um, and that was uh, much appreciated. Um, okay, so bookshelves, bookshelves, bookshelves. So I know we had um, some, uh, our nonfiction new releases were back here. So let's go ahead and nab our other new releases shelf. Um, just do this here. Okay, there's our nonfiction new releases. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Um, okay, and then we had our nonfiction section here. Um, okay, let's do this. That is just fine. I'm not gonna bother with uh, making them totally next to each other, back to back. That'll be just fine. Yeah, that actually fits really nicely in that space. That is just about what our nonfiction section looked like, um, or the start of it anyway. Um, so let's, uh, yeah, that's better. Okay. At least get some bookshelves in here. Um, okay. I'm trying to think here. Um, we had a big main aisle. I'm pretty sure. I mean, we definitely had more than the two shelves. I think I can I just go with the two shelves just spatially I know there was another one uh, I'll do it why not oh wait a minute it does 
Why does that... Oh, it's because it's facing the same way. I was very confused. I was like, why does that seem to fit so nicely next to each other? Okay. That, that was because it was the wrong way for both of them. There we go. Not much use if the bookshelves are facing each other, huh? Um, yeah, okay. Squeeze that in one more. Okay, there we go. There's our nonfiction section. And it definitely feels like our fiction section is going to be a little smaller than it actually was, but that's okay. Ooh, yeah. Okay. Well. Maybe I will just cheat a little bit and just do that. We definitely had, we used to have, I mean, it was pretty much just row after row of shelves, um, and we really loved being able to open that up a little bit. Um, we did that fairly recently before before this year. Um, loved being able to open that up. It just felt so much fresher and accommodating and comfortable. Um, yeah, we loved having this big aisle in the middle here. I think that's about right. It was about lined up with uh, there was an emergency exit door back here, so um, that seems about right. We'll do that. That's that's just fine. So we had those, and then we did have a few more in here. And these went back much further. But I think I'm just going to call it at that. Um. Yeah, I'll do it here, too. Oops. There we go. Okay. So... Here we go! That looks so much more like a library. I love that. That's great. So yeah, here is our area here. Let's get some lower shelves back here, at least um, for our teen books here. Um, okay. This is where our graphic novels and manga and teen nonfiction lived. that. Um, I bet I can fit. Yeah, I'm overlapping a little bit, that's okay. We're just roughly getting shelves in place here. Okay. Um, we have our teen fiction over here, and then we had another row there. Shorter row here. It's a little tight here. Okay. All right. So that. Put that up a little bit. All right. So we had a spinner of books right there. All our new teen books here, um, and also uh, our teen services desk was staffed there as well. Um, we had computers back there as well, and then there were windows too. Um, we should do the windows. Um, that would be that would be nice. Let's do some windows here, um, and then we can hop up to the kids area. Uh, we've got about 40 minutes left till noon, so we're gonna be counting down. 
Um, so we had several windows here. I, those look placed. Um, now I had to download these um, because I definitely wanted the um, look of the two smaller windows up top and the larger window beneath. Um, that was definitely uh, something I, I wanted to make sure I got. So the outside looked really great um, and really close to what it was. Um, uh, as I was saying earlier, um, this is The Sims 3. I have the, probably the most experience with The Sims 3 and have done a little bit of the, you know, custom creation. Um, like someone created these windows. Um, I, I, I can edit a few things and, and you know, create in that way. I tried really hard to edit and add the stained glass to these windows, the stained glass. So fun fact, those stained glass windows that so many people love, they are actually stickers. Um, those, uh, someone very carefully and with much love and care placed those stickers on those windows. They are not real stained glass, but they look really good fooling people into thinking they're stained glass, including myself. I definitely thought they were, um, and when I found out they weren't, I was blown away. Um, I tried really hard to get those stained glass stickers on these windows, but my skills, unfortunately, um, did not quite um, meet our, uh, our expectations, um, or our uh, reality, I suppose. Um, and so I was not able to do that, but... I did my best. I gave it a go. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and go through and add all these windows because I know we had two windows here in our reference magazine area. Oh, I might have been there. That looks more right to me. Um, we had two windows back here. Oh man, it's so much lighter back here. Oh, that's so nice. Yeah, I really needed those windows. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and keep adding those back here. Lovely blue. They all have blinds in them. Um, now we did have. Oh boy, we had two windows there. It's not quite to scale, but that's okay. Um, I think I'll just do the one window there. Um, we did have two originally, but that's okay. And then we had one, two there. It might have just been one there, because there was a door right here. Um, so let's go ahead and place a door there. Um, and we'll go ahead and just do a simple door. Yep, that is just fine. And it was actually... The inside was... Um, the color of... Um, just like a basic, generic door, um, but the, uh, that same kind of color of the wallpaper, actually, but the um, outside was blue, just like the windows. No, it wasn't. It was red, because it blended with the bricks. That's right. Okay. So I will have to go out and edit that, because I was like, oh, it's blue. It wasn't blue. That's fine. We will do that nice, generic, um, and then this we will do with a red. It's a little different color red. I'll fix that a little bit. Just maybe make it a little darker and a little less orange. Yeah, okay, let's do that. That's fine. Yeah, that works. Okay, and then the staff door back here as well. Yep. Um, same deal as far as I remember. Maybe that one was blue. No, I'm pretty sure that one was red too. I'm already misremembering and that's okay. okay. Alright, well we got all the windows. There, that looks a lot better. Okay. There we go. So got a service door back here. We actually now get a door back here too. It doesn't matter, but there we go. 
Okay. There we go. Wow, the library's so much brighter here. Okay, I probably can get rid of this one. Yeah, all right. I'm gonna move this kind of more into that space. Just kind of rearrange the lights a little bit, give it more of a... Get them in the aisles. All right. Okay, there we go. There we've got some books here. Big open space here for all our computers. Cool. Looking good to me. Yeah, that looks great. Very welcoming. It was a. Uh, it was a. Uh, nice building and, and people felt very comfortable and, and cozy here and that's definitely something we are um, one of our top priorities of our our next chapter our next building um, is we we're not we're not going modern we're not going um, uh, you know cold and clean lines as far as um, the design aspect goes and the aesthetic goes we're very much trying to fit in with what the Marian community feels like while we get a lot of more modern like technology and, and cool things like that where we're determined to keep it nice and cozy and as comfortable as this one was, if not more so. Um, so again, if you have any questions or want to learn more about our new building um, after we are saying farewell to this one, um, please definitely visit our website at marianpubliclibrary.org. Um, click the Our Next Chapter menu link on our website um, and learn more about our new building project um, and uh, celebrate with us as we um, say farewell to this library and have a chance to, sit, to say goodbye and um, get excited for the new one with us. Um, we're stoked. We are stoked for the new building. Okay, so um, we do have a request here. Uh, Madeline wants uh, the seed library added. So um, our seed library um, is a really cool feature that um, we that lived by the information desk. Um, so aside from just allowing people to check out books and CDs and DVDs and audiobooks and playaways and all this stuff. We have a bunch of cool special collections. Um, we have um, tablets, sleep frog tablets for children to check out. Um, we have um, recently started this year, we have what's called a library of things, which are things you can check out and experience so everything from um, like outdoor like kits um, like you can check out like a I think you can check out a like a, oh I know you can check out a metal detector um, and we just added a whole bunch of new items to our library of things um, and you can still check those out today you have to call the library um, and uh, you will be able to um, uh, put something on hold and see what we have available and you'll be able to come pick it up. But oh man, we have so many cool things in our library of things. Um, and, but anyway, uh, moving, moving on to the, all the other awesome things we have, we have a um, seed library. So you can check out seeds, like vegetable seeds, um, garden, gardening seeds basically, um, and so they're organized in a wonderful um, uh, old library card catalog um, that was beautifully um, found and refurbished by, um, and, and in partnership um, with Iowa Big and Feed Iowa First. Um, uh, and, oh man, it's so cool. You basically can just come in and um, check out seeds that you can then plant and then the idea is at the end when 
you are kind of collecting seeds from the plants you grew, you can bring them back and then other people can check them out and grow them. So it's this whole, you know, you can grow vegetables and, and grow all these things and, and bring them back and allow more people to grow. And it's just this really cool, really wonderful um, service. Um, uh, that's, oh, it's so awesome. Um, it's uh, the um, Sonia Kendrick Memorial Seed Library. Um, and uh, yes, please, if you have any questions, definitely reach out. Um, ask us about it. We still have the seed library, even if it's not physically available. Obviously, growing season will be coming up. So if you're looking for something to grow, definitely check out our seed library. You don't even need a library card to use it. Um, we'd love if you got a library card if you don't already have one. But yes, seed library. Check it out. Excellent. Okay. So... Um, let us, let's get the information desk up here so we can get the seed library around. There is another column around here that was right by the information desk. Um, and let's just go ahead and use, we'll just use these. Oh, well, it was a little higher. Let's use the, the counters here. Let's see if we can get the information desk. Oh, that is, that is so far away. That seems, I think I got some scale wrong in this. We'll have to figure this out. Um, yeah, the scale is definitely off in this. We'll figure it out. It'll be fine. We'll add some more books over here, even though they technically weren't over here. Oh, well, we did have large print. I forgot we had large print there. So that makes a little more sense. There were more books on that side, so. All right. Let's see here. So, the information desk. Squeeze back here. All right. We'll give that a go. We'll say that's fine. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Then we had large print there. No wonder. I was just a little confused because... I was like, why? wait a minute, the information desk was over here, right? Nope, it was much closer to our DVDs and such, so. Um, okay. I'm gonna even scoot it out a little bit and see if I can. Yeah, it wraps around just very nicely. Okay. So yeah, the seed library lived right over here. So let's go ahead and add that in. That's a little bigger than we actually had, but that's okay. Okay, so the seed library. Um, shoot, I definitely had a piece of custom content that was an old, um, an old library card catalog. I definitely should have grabbed that. Um, okay, let's see here. Appliances, I'm just looking through. What kind of matches a seed library? We do a fridge. Um, do a refrigerator. Uh, there's always cabinets. Um, do cabinets. These are not shiftable. Okay. I do have, I mean, I have um, end tables. Coffee tables. Those can't really stack, though. Let's see here. Sea library. Entertainment. I have a beekeeping box. I could do the beekeeping box as a seed library. We'll keep that one out. Um, let's see here. I'm trying to remember what I have. I could also just do a dresser. A dresser might be a, a nice way to do it do both. Let's just do both. Um, let's do the dresser. 
and the beekeeping box, because those both seem pretty appropriate. So we'll just kind of stack them next to each other. Yeah, so here's our little little seed library. You can't check out bees at the library. Let's 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 do make that clear. You cannot check out bees at the library unless you're talking about your A, B, C's. No bees at the library, but you can check out seeds. It's a lot of E sounds. Um, you can check out seeds. Uh, which I still, it's so cool. Um, let's, okay. We'll make that. That's our seed library here. We'll just kind of do that the same too. There we go. We'll make that our seed library. Not perfect, but. There's our seed library right there. That's where it lived, right between the information desk and the large print section, which was right over here. So we have a limited amount of time left together. Um, I um, am definitely hoping to um, uh, be able to finish this at some point and um, maybe even um, that looks really good I've never done that before with a desk and a counter but um, that looks really good uh, I am hopefully at some point um, we'll be able to uh, maybe even share this um, as a file um, I don't know how many people still play The Sims 3 um, I don't know how many people, you know, have a lot of the expansion packs. Um, as I said, I've been playing for 15 years outside of working at the library. And, um, uh, I mean, I was playing in high school. Um, and, uh, so it may not be of use to anyone, but I am more than happy to, to share if, if desired. So, there we are. There's the information desk. Perfect, look at that. That came together really quickly. Yeah, okay, it's, okay, well, we'll maybe fix that. <laughs> maybe we should fix that. Let's just do this. Or is there a, maybe a rounded, I think I have a rounded table that might work out a little better. Although I think the rounded table yeah, it's gonna do that. Which is fine. We can, we can make that work, right? There we go. You know what? That's fine. It's a little bit lower um, than the rest, but again, the computers you can't set on counters, so it's fine. And the little mouse pad's hanging off the edge of the table there, but you know, that's okay. There we go. There we go. Now the information staff is ready and willing to help out um, with your needs. There we go. Cool. <laughs> Works for me. <laughs> uh, that's good. Okay. So we've got the information desk here. And um, we should just throw some shells up for large print. I think I'm going to use... We did, we used to have really tall shelves of large print, um, but we did open it up a little bit, and now we have had, yeah, had slightly shorter shelves. Just check the spacing here. Yeah, that looks great. Okay. I think there was a post in large print too, but to be honest, I don't fully remember. So... Go post list for now. Oh. Interesting. I was not doing that as well as I could have, huh? Fine, we'll 
we'll just have that be the large print section. Cool. Yep, that's right. Okay. And then we had magazines. Slightly taller shelves. I think just for the variation, I'm gonna do these again. They weren't quite that tall, but. Okay, you know, they weren't that tall, but it just looks a little weird in my opinion. So let's go ahead and just do more of these shorter shelves. Oh, wait a minute. I, oh, those are, those are video game shelves. These shelves, the magazine shelves are really interesting because they kind of had flip tops. So you could store magazines underneath them and then set them on the front of the, the flip top as well. Um. I don't have anything like that in, in the game, but um, yeah, we'll, we'll give it a go. I think I will. Yeah, I'll just do those shelves. Just give something a little, a little different, a little more variety here. So. Let's, uh, let's get some color over here. Get those matching the way they're supposed to. Interesting, interesting. You know, that's fine. Let's do that. That's fine. Just a little different. Magazine shelves. All right. Yeah, that looks nice. You get some face out, like, oops, sorry, flower picture, butterfly pictures, and shells and stuff. That looks nice. Okay. There we go. I know we definitely had two rows of those, but. Um, just gonna work on the reference. This was our reference area now. There we go. Just tuck that back there. Yep, we had some reference shelves back there. That was where we kept, you know, our local history section. Um, local history was one of those things that, um, in this day and age, you know, we, we were talking about technology earlier and, uh, um, but it was really cool. I always found myself, if someone had a local history question that I like didn't know the answer to, I would always go look in a book. Like I, it was much easier to to go back to that section and, and pick out um, the Oxley volumes about Marion um, and kind of flip through those and see if the answer was in there. Because um, I mean, you know, a lot of the records and things stored, you know, if they're not digitized, if they're not, you know, in, were, were not scanned from a newspaper or anything. They're, you know, those, they're held in books. And, um, you know, we can't keep everything. We're, we're a public library, we're not an archive. Um, but there were always a few that always um, had some really good answers to, to questions people had, you know, like, you know, when, when was this building or what was this building before? You know, you could find, uh, oh, this building, you know, looks like this block had a bakery and a laundromat or, you know, stuff like that. So it was always really cool to kind of go and browse um, back here and all the books, you know, kind of smelled a little more like a library, I guess you might say, that kind of musty, um, little musty older smell, not a bad way, but yeah, definitely. A nice little, nice little section, nice little collection to have. Uh, yeah, so let's see. We got 15 minutes left till noon. Like I said, we're there's no way we're gonna get all of this done. Um, but I do want to go up and scan through here, and I, I do want to get some of our children's um, 
children's sections in here. So I think I'm going to use these because this is kind of a children's bookshelf. Um, and I'm just going to... I've got toys and stuff. That That is definitely something we have. Um, and we'll have in the new, new building. We got some... Okay, we have some really cool cool stuff happening in our new building children's section that uh, I would love to tell you about, but man, I, I just, I don't think I should be the one to spoil the surprise. So I think you're just going to have to stay tuned for that one, but it is going to be awesome. And I cannot wait to show you like, we'll, we'll, we'll probably have pictures out eventually. Oh, it's going to be so great. So yeah children's section oh it's gonna be great i'm gonna wish i was a children's librarian i mean our teen space is gonna be pretty great too but it's all gonna be really awesome but all right so let's see here okay okay let's we had them slanted at the end and then we had our regular books let's see weren't that tall. I think I'm going to use the short ones again. It's a good height. Alright. So, oh, okay, this is where the best hiding spot in the library was. So, if you did not venture often into the children's section, um, you might not have known this, but there was most definitely a column and it was right about here um, and this column was actually basically built into a bookshelf so um, it extended so far into the bookshelf that you couldn't actually mount shelves on it without kind of cutting shelves down and doing some custom stuff. So they essentially just left one column of a shelf like empty. They took out all the shelves. So you on the left side there were there were shelves of books, but on the right side it was taken up half partly by the column, um, and that was that. Um, so you could go into this row and there was enough room for a grown adult to stand right about here in the shelf so when you stood at the end of the aisle and looked down you couldn't see them it was the best hiding spot the best hiding spot and only if you'd come to enough of our teen lock-ins and played enough hide and seek you knew it was there because like that was the best place to hide because newbies had no idea it was there like i mean even if they did it wasn't what you know you look you just look down the aisle and you don't see anyone so you keep going oh man it was the best hiding spot by far and <laughs> it's definitely like man we gotta figure out i'm like we should plan our new library around hide and seek i think that would be a fantastic idea you know just coming from from me personally you know books okay library services okay hide and seek absolutely <laughs> that's what i think anyway <laughs> and i'm sure i could find some teenagers who would agree with me so um yes that was that was by far the best hiding spot in the in the library this library building um, it's definitely yeah i will miss that going forward for sure Okay, so we can't unfortunately really recreate that hiding spot, but that's okay. We'll uh, just get our books in here. Yeah, alright. I think I'll have to move that row back a little bit. I 
think I'll just do one row here. It's fine. Okay. Oh yeah, that's got plenty of room here. So this was, um, I mean for a long time I know it was children's chapter books. Um, your awesome, you know, middle grade upper elementary middle school chapter books um, and then for a while at the end there it was our children's nonfiction section um, no vice no that was no vice versa vice versa for a really long time it was children's chapter books and then at the end it became children's nonfiction um, and then our children's chapter books moved back to this area all right, looks like we're hitting the um, 10 minute marker here soon. Um, I'm just gonna start throwing shelves every which way. Um, yeah, for a long time too, our picture books were back here. Now they got sorted and we're all in this area. Lots of kids shelves in here, lots of toys. Oh, I do, I do wanna add though, um, kids, here we go. I think it's in here. I have a train set which I definitely wanted to add because um, obviously our children's area was train themed we had a whole bunch of train shelves back here for our board book collection um, and I um, didn't realize it for a really long time um, but if you looked at the ceiling there were actually train imagery and train tracks printed on our ceiling tiles uh, which is really cool. Um, so you could kind of follow the tracks around. It's great. Um, yeah, so we had a whole bunch of train stuff. So I really wanted to put this um, train train tracks in here. And this is actually supposed to be um, a recreation of the Sims world that we're living in right now. Um, this is the city hall and the downtown plaza. Um, and I ripped this out to build this library. So, um, as you can see, yeah, see, um, it's on the other side here. There it is. There's the city hall. I should twist it so it's actually, there we go. Now you can see it. City hall and then the hills beyond. It's a very cute little Easter egg in The Sims, but there we go. There's our train. Um, and then let's see here. Um, we actually had more storage over here. Um, and we had, right at the end, we had some children's programming back in this area, which was really fun. Um, there's a door back here. Um, there we go. Um, we had our children's bathroom back here, and then there were more shelves back here. I think I'm going to do the big tall ones back just for the heck of it, just to kind of get it filled in here. Okay, and I'm just gonna do two rows back here, that's just fine. Um, and then we had, actually I think, I'll just do this, because there was a, an aisle there. Yeah, so now is the time um, if you have any memories or anything you want to share, um, I would be happy to um, to read those aloud if you want to post those in the comments or, you know, anything you might want to say um, about the library or um, about any, you know, any anything you can think of, really. Um, it's been really fun. I know for me today, going back and uh, looking at this and, and reminiscing and uh, uh, yeah, just makes me smile. That's good. I'm gonna go back and add some chairs along here, I think, even though this is where the um, train was. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and add some chairs here. I know there were 
are some chairs back there as well. And just... a nice big toy box. and such. That's nice. Here we go. Alright. Oh, it's, it's looking very nice. And some more um, shelves actually over here. You know for sure we had. I think there were, there were a couple columns out here that I'm missing as well. There we go, some more bookshelves, and I know this was kind of our um, story time area. I know we had a whiteboard there, so I'll just go ahead and snag a whiteboard. Um, and that was a movable one, actually, so I'll just put that out there. I know there was a chair there, I think. Yeah, so just a nice little kids area. Lots of books, lots of places to hang out. Uh, maybe I'll throw some, I should have some sleeping bags, because I know we used to have, um, well, I bet the sleeping bags won't be unfurled, but that's okay. Beds? Yes. Um, we had those big blue kind of play mats, so I'll just throw some sleeping bags out there to represent those. Yeah, that looks really lovely. We did have a children's desk here for a little bit, too. Um, or for a long time, actually. Yeah, and um, I do need to add, there was a window there. Oops. Just got disrupted. There actually were a couple windows back here as well that we didn't have open super often, um, but they did exist. I think there were two right back there. Alright, look at that. We're really coming together. We've got just a short amount of time left. Um, and I think it's uh, that is as far as we're going to get today. Um, so let me just uh, raise the roof here and we're going to go back into. go into our live mode here um, and we'll just go ahead and um, zoom in here and, and take a look at our library um, yeah it uh, definitely um, was a great building for for all the years that we resided in it um, and we are forever grateful that this is where we came from and very excited to look forward to the future um, yeah so let's let's just take a little bit of a walk um, yeah, it's going to be a little bit of a slow walk, I think, and, but, yeah, so we walk into our lobby, oh, let me just change a setting here real quick, uh, object hiding, there we go, okay, so, yep, we take a walk into our lobby, um, and 
here we see, or through the front doors, oh, um, we see the wide windows, and oh, here's the vending machine, <laughs> and the bench, and we've got our phone over here, oh, and now we're looking into the library, um, and as we head on in, we have our children's section full of toys and books. Um, over here we can see into the rest of the library with our self-check stations and our circulation desks. Um, and our coffee maker. Oh, there's our new release shelf that, that we had up there. Um, oh, you can see into the children's area from the self-check stations. Um, walking back here, um, you know, here's the DVDs, and there were the study rooms, and oh, there's our copy machines and the conference room, and the rest of the library, the information desk, all the shelves, all the shelves looking out, all the windows. Looking out. Yeah, there we are. And looking back out into the library, you can see. all the shelves and then we're going back out found what we needed and it's time to leave the library and uh, maybe pop by the Friends Bookstore on our way out, stop at the DOT kiosk, and uh, that's it. Well, we have reached noon. Happy New Year's Eve. And thank you very much for tuning in for watching this video. Um, I hope you enjoyed um, getting to see and head into the library one last time. Um, I certainly uh, enjoyed being able to recreate it and uh, enjoyed getting to visit one last time. And uh, if only we had a billboard with pancakes, maybe I'll, I'll put, in a, put in a word for that, see if we can't get that in downtown Marion, right? <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, so thank you to um, everyone who tuned in, um, for all of our staff and all of our loyal patrons and um, our community. Um, we greatly appreciate you um, and greatly appreciate you for surviving this year with us, for being patient and, and being kind and loyal. And we are so excited to close this chapter and begin the next one. Um, thank you for tuning in today. I hope you have a wonderful New Year.